Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a global transparent floating menu bar with DV's Theme Builder. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So right now, we are in the WordPress admin dashboard. So the first thing we need to do is to come all the way down here to the Theme Builder. So just hover over where it says DV, click on Theme Builder, and then you want to click here on Add Global Header. Click on Build Global Header. And now this is going to take us to the Builder. So now we can build from scratch. I'm just gonna close this for now because we need to go right into our section settings. I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Let's come over here to the background. And because this is gonna be transparent, we might as well make this a transparent background color. So I'm gonna come over here, click on this little icon, and now my background is transparent. Now it's difficult to see it right now because we don't have anything uh, under it, but uh, let's move on to the next stage. And this time we need to uh, come over here to design and click on sizing. So here we need to make this width 100%. And then next we need to remove the padding both on the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna enter zero, activate this chain because this chain allows me to have similar values both on the top and the bottom. And by the way, if you wanna download this template, you can download it to the link that I'll link to in the show notes below. So the next thing we need to do is we need to adjust the Z index. So this allows us to make sure that our menu is going to be above everything on our website. So I'm gonna click here on advanced, click on visibility, and on the Z, Z index, I'm just gonna drag this all the way to 999. And now it's time to add our brand new row. So I'm gonna save this. Come over here, click on this plus button. And the layout I'm going to choose is this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Now, before I add anything in here, we need to go into our row settings. So I'm gonna click on this gear icon, click on design, and then over here on sizing. First thing we need to do, we need to make sure equalize column heights is set to yes. And our width, both our width and maximum width need to be set to 100%. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Next, we need to head over to spacing. So over here on spacing, I just need to add a top padding of 2VW. And on the bottom, it just needs to be 0VW. Now, when we change the view to view this on a mobile device or a tablet, we need to make sure the three columns are all in a straight line. And in order for us to achieve this, we need to add some CSS code. So I'm gonna click here on the advanced tab, click on custom CSS, and I'm gonna paste my CSS code here in the main element. This code can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right, so let's go ahead now and continue designing our layout. So I'm gonna come back over here to content, so here we need to go to section two settings. So I'm gonna click here on the second column, click on background, and here we need to add a color. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and then drag this slider down a little bit because the value I'm going to add needs to go between these brackets. So I'm gonna paste it like that. We also need to add a border. So I'm gonna click here on design and then all the way down here to border. I'm gonna choose the bottom border. Make sure it's set to two pixels. And then we also need to add a border color. So I'm gonna click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Next, I'm gonna add a box shadow. So I'm gonna come over here, choose the first option here, and then I am going to add my vertical position here, set it to 20 pixels. The blur strength needs to be 50, and the spread strength needs to be set to minus 20. Now, finally, here on the color, I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool and paste the values between the brackets and then save. I wanna save this one more time. Now it's time to add our modules. So I'm gonna come over here to the first column, click on this plus button. And here is where we need to add our image module. I'm gonna select it. And this is where our logo is going to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my logo. And here it is, I'm gonna select it. Now, if you wanna use your own logo, uh, the dimensions that we have here are 139 by 44 pixels. Okay, so now that I've added it, I can just click on upload an image. Now I need to align it to the center. So I'm gonna click here on design, alignment, align center. Now, as you can see, this logo is pixelated. That means it's a bit too big. Thankfully, we can go in and customize the width of this logo. So I'm gonna head over to my sizing settings. So over here, I am going to start with the width, set this to 8VW. Now, immediately I need to go into my different views here. So I'm gonna click on this icon, go into my tablet. Now my tablet here, the size needs to be 
14 VW. Now you also need to keep an eye on how you're entering these values here because if it doesn't look right, you just need to play around with the sizes here. Okay, so that's the size for my tablet view. And then finally, I need to add, add my size for my phone view. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter 21 VW. And then I'm gonna switch back over here to my desktop tab. So pretty much this is looking great. I'm gonna go ahead now and save. And then next, I'm gonna come over here to the middle one and add my menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this plus button, search for my menu, select it. Okay, so those are the two links that I have for my menu. But of course, you can go ahead and add your pages to the menu. And this will have more links here on the top. So making sure here you've chosen the right menu. And I've already set mine as main menu. So in your case, you may have a different name for your menu. So we're going to come over here to the background, remove the background color because we want to make it, the, we want to make this transparent. Next, we need to come over here to the design, click on layout. And right now it's set to left aligned. We need to center this. Now over here on the menu text, we need to add our text because right now it's set to default. So the font I'm going to look for here is called Muli. I'll go ahead and select it. I'm going to add my color here, paste the value. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I am using in this tutorial, I would leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Right, so the next thing we need to do here is to set our sizes. So at the moment, it's set to 14 pixels. I'm going to set this to 1VW. And I might as well go in and enter my sizes for the tablet and the phone. And here for the tablet, we're going to set this to 2VW and for the phone, 3VW. So back over here to my desktop tab. Now we need to add the color for our drop down menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Click here on this plus button, and then I'm gonna add my color like that. Now that's just in case you, uh, you decide to add a drop down menu, it's gonna look really nice. So the next thing we need to do here is to make sure our hamburger icon is uh, set. So I'm just gonna scroll all the way down here to icons. Okay, and here it is. Click here on this eyedropper tool and paste the color in here, that. Now let's take a look and see if this is gonna show. And we can see there our hamburger is now showing with the right color. Now finally, on this module, we need to come over here to spacing and set our padding here to 1.5 VW, both to the top and the bottom. And as you see, I've just activated my chain here. So the same value now has been added both to the top and the bottom. So pretty much we're done here. I'm gonna go ahead and save. And then finally, we need to uh, come over here now to the third column. And this is where we need to add a button. So I'm gonna search for it, select it. Now you can name this whatever you want. So I'm just gonna leave it as click here. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design alignment, make sure it's centered. Now to fully customize this button here, we need to click here on button and activate use custom styles for button. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. So I'm gonna start here with a text size. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my size for the desktop. And then I also need to go into the other view. So I'm gonna to go to the tablet. And for the tablet, this needs to be set to 1.5 VW. And then the phone needs to be 2.5 VW. Okay, so moving on, button text color. This needs to be set to white. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And then our background color here, I'm gonna paste my color in this space here. And you can see here on the update, the colors are actually changing. Now the button border width needs to be set to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then moving on, our button border color. I'm just gonna click here on this eyedropper tool and just paste my color in here. And then the border radius needs to be set to zero. So here on the font, we're going to use the exact same font we used on the menu. And this is Muli, select that. This time I'm gonna make it bold. Now we're just gonna add a bit of breathing space on this button by coming all the way down here to spacing. So the first thing we're gonna do is to add a padding of one VW both to the top and the bottom. So make sure this is one VW and then left and right is going to be two VW. Now we can see here our button color, text color has not been updated. I'm just gonna come back over here to my button and make sure my text color is set to white. And then the next thing we need to do here is to come to the advanced tab, custom CSS, and then in the main element, we're just gonna add these two lines of CSS code. Now this same CSS code needs to be added to the section. So I'm gonna save this, come all the way here to my section settings, advanced, custom CSS, 
and I'm gonna add it here as well. Okay, so now that we've finished designing this, all we have to do now is to save. So I'm gonna save by clicking this button here on the bottom right, close out of here, save changes one more time, and then now it's time to view this page. So I'm gonna go ahead and view the site, and now you can see that our menu is now showing, and of course it is transparent. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.